So welcome back to episode 3 of Confirmed Transfers for January of course. We've had a, a pretty interesting start to the off series of course, this third episode. We've got 6 more players here today that are going to be pretty good. We've got some actually quite big ones today. We've got some players that made big transfers. We've got some players that have been released actually. Some big names in football that have been released and yeah, we've got a few things to look at. Last episode, which was like yesterday or the day before, hit 620 likes, which is pretty good. It beat the first episode, which is obviously always the main thing. We want to try and always beat the previous episode. Now I want to try and beat 6 620. If we can beat 620 likes today, guys, like I say, this will be entered into a giveaway for one of you end of the month. Alright? Is that alright? So 620 likes, let's beat it and let's get into the first player. Let's go. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook. Link's in the description. I do live stream over there daily. Don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube as well, Twitter, etc. Everything you need is down below. So next up, we've got a player who's rejoined his old club. Okay, we've got Pepe de Porto. This happened, I believe, uh, a few days ago. Okay, so you may have heard this one. You may have not heard this one, but... This is, of course, Pepe. Obviously, you know, Champions League winner at Real Madrid a couple of times over. He went to Besiktas. I think he's been to China as well. He's been about the block since leaving Real Madrid. But the Portuguese defender has rejoined Porto on a two and a half year deal. That's right. He was at Porto 12 years ago after he left them for Real Madrid. So as you guys can see, there is a, um, well, not as you guys can see. I don't know if I'm going to do it on the graphics just yet. But Pepe could get a flashback card in FIFA 19. I think that'd be pretty cool. If you guys want me to do a potential flashback, obviously, video, drop a like on this video. I'll see if I can do that for you. I'll make five or six players that I think could get flashbacks in FIFA 19 in the near future. Obviously, we've got Ebro. Cassius in a minute, obviously Pato, Danny Alves, we've had quite a few, and Daniel Sturridge as well. Pepe could be another one, that could be another video, let me know if you want to see that. So, obviously, back in the day, obviously, Pepe spent a quite a few, I think it's like three years, or he spent a few years at Porto, and he actually won two league titles when he was there, which is pretty good. He's won the Liga and Champions League three times each whilst he was in Spain, so he's won whatever there is to win in football he's done it to be fair to him he obviously won the euros as well i think he was in that i think he was in that portuguese team as well what's interesting about this is actually it sees him reunite okay with former teammate cassius who i just mentioned okay he was also at porto so we're gonna see cassius and pepe once again in the same team i mean that's that's pretty cool isn't it that is pretty cool so there we go, first play of the episode is a big one of course very interesting pepe back to porto let's move into the second player now now, I always try and feature, obviously, Premier League stuff because obviously a lot of my, you know, a lot of my audience and stuff are Premier League fan-based. And this guy next up, we've got Okaka. He's actually left Watford and he's gone to Udinese on loan. Now, Watford are having a pretty good season. Obviously, Okaka finds himself unable to get into the team, as you would expect. That, uh, you know, there's a, there's a few players there. I can't even say his name. What's his name? Delefeo. Delefeo, that's it. That's the guy I'm thinking of. He's having a good season. Tini, uh, Dini's still getting a few goals. I can't even speak today, to be honest. But Okaka joined the Hornets in 2016, and he's gone on to score five goals and 36 appearances, 39 appearances, sorry, for the club, which isn't that impressive, really. The Italy international who joined from Anderlecht, okay, has only made three substitute appearances this season. So... He's only come off the bench three times this year. That's all he's had. So no wonder he's gone away on loan. So, of course, it's only to the end of the season. Obviously, being at his age, 29 years of age, not playing at all. You want to be playing football because you don't really have many years left. He's gone to Udinese on loan. He's gone back to Serie A. Now, what for the fans? Are you, are you bothered by this? I assume probably not. But that was the second player. Now, in most recent news, a couple of days ago, we've got James Collins. He's actually signed for Ipswich Town. The former West Ham defender, of course, was a free agent, I believe. And he has signed a deal until the end of the season. Championship strugglers Ipswich have signed former West Ham, Aston Villa and Welsh international James Collins on a deal until the end of the season. The 35-year-old has been without a club, a okay, case since being released for the at the end of the 2017-18 campaign. He has played 346 career league games and retired from international football in November 2017 after winning 50 caps for Wales. Now Collins is the fifth new signing of the month for Ipswich who are 10 points from safety to the bottom of the league. They really, really don't want to go down. They're investing heavily into the squad. Five signings already. James Collins being a, you know, pretty well-established international Premier League player, whatever you want to call him. Been in the Premier League for years and years and years. Can he help Ipswich to stay up? I hope he can. Now, apparently, he's already had an unbelievable debut, apparently, which I have missed. I haven't watched it or whatever. But um, what happened? Paul Lambert called him unbelievable, unbelievable afterwards, okay, according to 
uh, whoever he spoke to after the game. And I believe that she won 1 0 over Rotherham, and it was like a defensive masterclass, if you like. I don't know, I didn't watch it, so if any of you guys did, let me know in the comment section down below, let me know. Um, like I said, I didn't watch it, but I'd be interested to know how we really did get on. Now, going into the third player, no, what we got? We've got our fourth player next, and I tell you what, this is probably so far the biggest story of the January transfer window. We do have the one and only Cesc of Fabregas, who's actually gone to Monaco. That's right, the legendary Cesc Fabregas, who's done everything in the Premier League, everything internationally, everything in Spain. He's pretty much done everything in football. He's now gone to Monaco to see what he can do. He's linked up with, obviously, his former teammate Thierry Henry, who is now his manager. It's, it's all a bit mad. Like, this is uh, this is happening all over the world at the minute. Now, he made his debut the other day in a one-all draw against Marseille. So, Monaco not had the best of times recently. So, getting a point against Marseille might be a good result. I'm not really too sure. You'd have to let me know. I'm not really too sure. So, Chelsea midfielder Cesc Fabregas has joined Liga Unside Monaco. Managed by his former Arsenal teammate Thierry Henry on a three-and-a-half-year deal. Very good contract for someone of his age, but he's only 31, so it does take him to like 34, maybe even 35, not really too sure. So Fabregas has actually described the move as a new project, calling it a great honour. I'm here to help the team, I'm looking forward to starting, I'm very excited, he added. Now for the deal, it's obviously pretty interesting. Uh, Monaco have not actually paid a fee for a Fabregas, but will pay bonuses to Chelsea linked to his performances. So there's no transfer fee, even though he's left, you know, whilst still under contract, which is obviously fairly interesting. Interesting, but Monaco have agreed to pay Chelsea bonuses. So, for example, when Fabregas plays, you know, 10 appearances or whatever, they'll have to give Chelsea a million pounds or something like that. Hypothetical, I'm not 100% sure what the deal is. It's not going to be revealed to the public, but that's sort of what I'm guessing, to be fair. So, Fabregas has won two Premier League titles, two FA Cups, and a League Cup in 501 appearances in English football. And that's not even coming including what he'd done for Barcelona, not even what he'd done for Spain, you know, World Cups, Euros and stuff. He's won everything, okay? No wonder this guy got a round of applause and he walked off to Chelsea the other day. But there you go, that is a that is a masterclass maestro midfielder who's officially left the Premier League. He's left the Premier League previously, but he came back to Chelsea, obviously. He left with Arsenal and then he's come back to Chelsea. And now he's probably gone for good. So Premier League, yeah, we've lost the great. We've lost the great. Now we've got two players next, okay, to finish off the end of the episode, okay, a couple of players that have actually been released by their clubs, and they were well-known Premier League players, been released. You could see them back in the Premier League very soon. When that deal happens, if it happens, I'll be the first to let you know, alright? So we've got Johan Kabai, he's actually been released, okay, I believe he's playing in the Middle East, okay, Al Nasir. Yeah, that's right. He's been released. Uh, he's been made a free agent just six months after Al Nasir signed the French midfielder from Crystal Palace. And Newcastle fans are desperate to see him return to St. James's Park. That's what Newcastle fans want. The 33-year-old looked to have finished his footballing career in Europe by going to the Arabian Golf League, which is renowned for signing big-name players and giving them a last payday before they retire. You probably already knew that, to be fair. That seemed to be the case for Kabai. Even though he made 31 appearances last year in the Premier League and, and could probably still do it in the Premier League now, he decided to go out to that league and stuff for whatever reasons he's decided on. So it's been a disappointing six months for him and he's now officially left. Um, it's interesting. How can you just get kicked out of your contract six months down the line? It's, it's all a bit mad. Oh, okay. So El Nassir have decided they need to reshuffle their team after they're currently ninth from the league. And they've opted to free up one of the foreign spots in their squad. So it might probably work similar to how the Chinese league work. And by offloading Kabai, obviously they freed up a foreign spot to sign a new player. Obviously they think Kabai's not quite the calibre they want, I guess. And they've obviously paid out his contract. And yeah, Kabai's still got probably a pretty decent payday, I suppose. But there you go, Kabai, Johan Kabai is now officially a free agent. Could he see well, could we see him back in the Premier League? Maybe someone like Newcastle, St. James's Park. It is possible, and I think it'd be a good signing for Newcastle too, but we don't know. We don't know. But he's a free agent, so he's technically free to someone that just got to pay his wages. Next up, we've got Alvaro Negredo. Now, Alvaro Negredo has also been released. Okay, now let's try and find a little bit more information on Al Navarro Negredo. Okay, it was Al Nasir as well. Exact same team as Kabai. They've decided to release him and Kabai. I find this hard to believe. I'm trying to find some more news articles on this, but I'm not really... Not really coming up with anything. He scored nine goals in ten games, Al Nasir. Like, you can't really get any better goal scoring record than that. It's nearly one goal a game. So, I find it hard to believe he's been released. But, I'll keep looking. He, he signed a two-year deal with him back in uh, September this year, last year. 
And he should be still there, but I'm not really sure what's going on. I'll have to maybe do a bit more information on this one. I can't really... Nothing's really coming up, to be fair. I mean, we've got Besiktas down the sea in September 18, 2018. Uh, September 18th, sorry. We've got 2 million euros for that transfer. Um, yeah, on the sea. Let's have a look on their club and see if they've announced anything official. Because they announced Kabai official. Negredo is left. Wait. Okay, I, I don't know what's going on. All right, I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna ignore that. For, okay, for now, and we're just gonna um, we're just gonna end, end, end the video. I think. Yeah, that was uh, different. That was different. So there we go, guys. If you have enjoyed this transfer episode, don't forget to drop a like and a thumbs up down below. I want to try and beat 620 likes. That'd be a big, big. Big, big task, but I'm pretty confident you can all do it. That would be absolutely amazing. Anyway, guys, don't forget to drop a like. I just said that. What the fuck's going on? Anyway, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. You know what to do. Link is in the description. I live stream FIFA every single day. If you want to see me bottle elite every weekend, you know where to go. Facebook.com forward slash ROS5IHD. I think that's right. I think that's right. Or, F or FB.GG fb.gg forward slash ros5ihd anyway yeah take it easy peace